Hello everybody, Don O'Don here with another update on the War Corsair project. Uh, this weekend, you're not going to see a whole lot of uh, changes to the aircraft. Uh, most of the work I did this weekend involved wiring. I uh, got in the back of here and uh, kind of tied things up. Went and bought some polyethylene tubing. And this is the static line from the altimeter to the airspeed indicator and then the line out to the out of the wing so I had to snake those all down through run them on outboard uh, got everything wired up to the actual ignition switch which is that back air so everything is now wired to run the only thing I'm lacking is power and ground to make the turn and bank work there's five pins here but three of them aren't needed for my application so all I need to do is just physically wire to these two power and ground connections right here on this I have common so that power doesn't get turned on until the master switch is on so then everything comes alive at that point uh, the ignition or the control for the engine computer which is in here here's the relay for the computer that only gets actuated by the actual ignition switch so when the ignition switch is turned to the run position it powers up that relay and then if I have a fuel switch fuel pump switch turned on you'll hear the pump run and shut off just like in a car I have two switches two pumps uh, they have to be turned on you turn on the master switch and then uh, I can turn on one of the fuel pumps but it won't run until I turn on the ignition and then I also wired the hour meter which is this device here I've wired that into the run position on a switch also so the only time that switch will ever be turned on is when I'm ready to run the engine so as soon as I turn it to run the hour meter starts ticking away and I can start the plane. Like I said, I have to uh, make sure the master switch, the, the ignition switch will not work unless the master switch is turned on. So it will not get power without the master switch being flipped on first. The master switch is hooked to a big uh, a constant duty solenoid. So when I hit the master switch, that turns on, applies full power to the positive bus bar on this side, negative bus bars over there. So then this powers up everything and then everything electrically is uh, able to be used at that point. Okay, then I did go ahead and make a bracket here for the holding the throttle cable, which is hooked up as you can see back there. I've got I can work the throttle from out here. That's wide open throttle, so I got more travel on the stick back here than I need throttle quadrant. So that's all finished. That's all uh, safety wired in, so it can't come out now. It's all pinned in here. Okay, then, uh, so that was mostly uh, yesterday, Saturday. I was figuring on doing some aileron or starting to fiberglass the rest of the control surfaces. But the morning started out uh, rainy, cool, and damp, which is about the worst application you can have for epoxy work. So I decided to work on this wiring. So I finished this up here, finished some wiring down in there, uh, tied everything up, tied everything up in the airplane, safety wired everything, got everything rearranged where it's good to go and uh, got the clamp here I need to mount to hold this to the mass air meter but I got everything lined up and then the two tubes I just ran come out right here and there's a the disconnects for those that's the static line and the pitot they're longer than they need to be so they'll be cut after I get the wings on and these will be the wires that will go out to a uh, future uh, wing tip lights nav lights so that was all day yesterday and then today I decided to work on the tail. Um, I actually ended up cutting the tail cone off last weekend and it was full of foam so it all had to be cleaned out. There's still some remnants in there to clean out but that's the tail. I didn't cut it off like I was expecting. I was really looking to cut it off clean up through here. But after looking, the uh, this bulkhead is set back in a little ways, and I wanted to cut it back here, so I left this intact. So that's in pretty good shape, and that's all the farther I had to clear it out to get the elevator to clear. Now I spent all day today fitting this elevator in place. Uh, once I found neutral, put a protractor on it. It was literally at the five degrees. So this the plans calls for 20 down. And that's 20 down and 30 up and that's 30 up 20 
30. And you can see here, this is where the servo motor goes for the trim tab, which will be is mounted right here once I build it. I notice after I get it together, it's like I got a hell of a gap there. So seeing how this isn't glass yet on top, I'll put an extra strip of foam in here to fill in this gap. I may end up moving these little strips of plywood as well, but uh, I'll have to fill that in. And then the trim tab will be a little longer. Uh, I do have to, some cleaning up to do on this before it's ready to um, finish up. Uh, looks like I might need to trim this corner down. I think it's a little fat on the bottom side on this side, uh, so I may have to sand sand that glass down and re-glass a little bit of the bottom. And then this will be ready to glass. So I got that done. And then the next biggest chore was all these push rods and rod ends have safety uh, jam nuts on them. Every one of these jam nuts had to be tightened. They were all loose. And the ones up inside are extreme royal pain to get to. Um, good thing I've got long arms because it was everything I could do to get back in there. We're talking that one control is clear into here. And then the other one is behind the seat. There's three rods from the stick back to a bell crank that pivots on three points looks on top so when the stick when you push the stick forward this rod goes back and the bell crank or the transfer arm pulls the bottom one and then the bottom comes back and hooks onto an idler and then the third one goes back so none of those were tight so I had to get back in there through this tiny little opening to get to those but I got them all centered locked down tightened and then I had to go through and work on the actual stick itself. So I had to get in there and hook that all up, tighten all them. Uh, I had to get the cotter pins and bolts in there, get that all done. You can see the throttles, all like I said, it's all ready to go. Just got to get back here and bolt it in. Uh, there's no light in there, so it's a little dark. So I spent all day today working on that. So that's kind of where I'm at. It'll be a fairly short update. And then I did notice in here in my rear pedals I had some bolts that were loose. Sorry about the lighting. I don't have the light hooked up. But I had to tighten two bolts on each side, put a cotter pin on this side. So I've been going through making sure everything is safety that has to be safety for now. So that's going to do her. I was also looking at the landing gear for the gear doors, uh, trying to figure out a nice way to. Uh, Get those tied in because they'll work the way they are except for when they come down they'll do this I got them got this one disconnected but the linkage you can push on them so the wind can actually um, move them around when you're flying which may tend to want to close them and if you try to retract the gear you're going to crunch them uh, I was originally looking at possibly doing a spring to hold them open but it may take a good force of spring to do it so I'm trying to figure out a better way that when the gears down it actually holds them open so, you can see I got some of the control pieces out. I was looking to work on them, but it never really did get quite warm enough. It was a nice weekend. I mean, upper 70s. So, that's where I'm at. Today was a much nicer day. A lot cooler. Uh, less damp, put it that way. It was comfortable working. So, all right, everybody. Sorry about that. Battery died. I was hoping I was going to get through this before it died, but didn't make it. Uh, but as I was starting to say, in order to get this to clear, to make this get its full travel without hitting, I had to come in and sand these edges, bevel them back under. This one wasn't bad. This one was actually good. This one, measuring from side to side, it was over a quarter inch longer than that side. So I had to trim that all off. So now, when it's folded all the way up, I have just a little gap there. Uh, remember this will be, this still has to be two layers of glass, so it can't, can't be tight yet. And if I have to, I can uh, sand a little more. And then the same thing on the bottom. Uh, there was a clearance issues that needed sanded, so the bottom probably going to need a little, well the bottom is already glass, so it's, it's okay. Um, all I got to do is fill and sand and paint. So, so that's where I'm at. And then I'll probably clean some of this foam out and maybe uh, just do some straight epoxy up in there or maybe a, a layer of glass. But either way, the tail cone, I need to make a, either an overlap on this or an overlap on the tail cone so when it comes together I can apply screws around here to screw that tail cone in and here as well. So, alright folks, that's going to do it for this week's update. 
As always, feel free to leave any comments, questions, or concerns, and I'll answer them as they come along. Oh, on another note, footnote, um, I see a lot of people do uh, post comments, but for some reason YouTube is not sending all the comments through. Uh, I actually had to have to go to the video and look for the comments physically. I have all the settings in YouTube set for send me notifications of any comments of anything, and I'm only getting like a third of them coming through. So I got to keep checking periodically to see, make sure people aren't posting. But I get a few of them, but only like a third. Uh, and, that, and they're set to come as soon as they're posted. They're not set to do one a day. So we'll see how it goes. So for now, I guess that's going to do it, folks. Again, appreciate everyone taking the time to watch my videos and hope they enjoy them. And hope they're, hopefully they're informative for you. All right, until next weekend, we'll see you then. This is Dino Don out.